As far as working on the F-22, the best part about it is the fact that when Lockheed Martin built this product, uh, they thought about the tools and things that we would require to maintain it while they designed the airplane. And to have that uh, at, at our fingertips is phenomenal. Not only do we have the tooling that we need to maintain it, we also have what's called FSRs that are embedded in our AMUs. They are no kidding Lockheed Martin employees. And if we do encounter hurdles along the road as we're maintaining it, those guys are there to help guide us along uh, in the process of repairing the airplane. This airplane is very intelligent. The days of the old paper technical orders are gone. We literally plug into the airplane with a laptop computer and talk to the airplane. We ask it questions, it asks us questions, and at any point that we realize that uh, maybe the airplane's not communicating properly or the airplane thinks that we're not communicating properly, it'll cease communication with us and we gotta start over. So it will not allow us to damage the airplane. It is a very intelligent weapon system. And uh, it's just, the ease of maintenance is there. Uh, everything is at our fingertips. It's a crew chief dream it is. from, uh, everything is so easily uh, accessed for us uh, and things like that. So, and, but if you look at the airplane, it appears there's not many panels on the jet. Uh, I assure you there are. So obviously there's coatings on the airplane that would have to be removed in order for us to go in and do that maintenance. And then there's a little lengthy process into the restoration of those coatings once that maintenance is done. But aside from that, the airplane is a phenomenal uh, as far as maintenance, supportability, sustainability, and all that stuff. Lockheed Martin was very intelligent when they designed this aircraft. I came off of working F-15s for about seven years, and I've transferred over to this aircraft for the past three. And the difference between working on a legacy fighter and this aircraft are, they're, they're quite similar. They took the best out of all of our legacy fighters. We have the hydraulic system and the flight controls of an F-16. The cockpit is based off of an F-16. The airframe is mainly just a tweaked F-15 mixed with a little stealth. So no matter what airframe we're coming off of, we, we all can pull from our past experience and work on this aircraft and understand it. And the aircraft actually spoils you as a maintainer because it is so quick to change. We're no longer changing huge boxes for computers. We're now working on much like your, your home computer. We're changing little circuit cards. The aircraft is telling us and it's troubleshooting for us. So it kind of spoils your fun as a mechanic. You know, the best thing about being a mechanic is no kidding finding the problem. And the jet will tell us what the problem is and tell us how to fix it. And with having this portable maintenance aid, our PMAs, we can actually talk to the aircraft, we can do ops checks without access in our cockpits. We can actually crank up the auxiliary power unit and run hydraulic checks, flight control checks, and we can even rig our flight controls, which in turn takes a lot less equipment and a lot less tools. So now when we, when we travel and we deploy and we go to a forward operating zone, we have a smaller footprint because we don't have to bring a lot of support equipment with us. These airplanes are not demo airplanes, and I want everybody to understand that. This airplane is no different than the airplane that might be sitting down under the sunshade or down on the other end of the hammerhead. There's, they're no different. These airplanes are combat ready right now. All you have to do is hang munitions on them, put gas, and send them. And that's the, because, like he said, there's only 118 of them. I can't pull one out of the fight to say this is my demo jet. So, but it's neat because they're all the same. You know, it doesn't matter. There's a full-up squadron up at uh, Elmendorf, up in Alaska. Holloman, down in uh, Alamogordo, New Mexico, just received their first two airplanes here a couple of weeks ago, and they had a big ceremony uh, about the uh, starting up that unit down there. So they're slowly getting their airplanes. From there, Hickam out in uh, Hawaii is gonna be for, uh, forced to have us all go out and do a hardship tour out in Hawaii for a short period of time with the Raptor. <laughs> and uh, it's, gonna be rough. Know, it's, 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 it's gonna be rough. So. <laughs> But no, Hickam's going to get a squadron of Raptors as well. And what's neat about Hickam getting them is it's going to be kind of a reverse integration, kind of like what we have here where we have the 192nd uh, Richmond Air National Guard that works hand in hand with our active duty. About 75% active duty here, 25% guard. I have guard pilots. They just started flying uh, their guard weekends here with the Raptor, which is pretty neat. They moved from Richmond down here with us. Now out in Hickam, it's going to be the opposite. You're going to have about 75% guard with about a 25% active duty integration. So, but that's, but that's how we're doing it because, you know, the guard, the reserves, all those guys play pivotal roles in the security of our nation. And in, in order to uh, give them the opportunity to fly the Raptor, we've integrated that. And uh, it's, it's been a pretty seamless process so far. But uh, there again, it comes back to that. The more you build, 
cheaper they are, you know? I keep saying that because it, it's important because, you know, the very first one, I mean, the, the on an average, these have been about $130 million a copy, on an average. The last ones we got were less than $100 million because as we get one, they start, the price goes down. And like I said earlier, close to 100 different subcontractors builds different pieces of this airplane in 46 states in this country. So that $130 million is going back into rural America out in this country. They're not contracted out. There's not any foreign stamps on it that said it was made somewhere else. It was made in this country. So yes, we do spend a lot of money, but we're not exporting that money. That money's being spent right here in this country, and that's a good thing because it boosts the economies in those areas across America. I mean, I was in Meridian, Mississippi earlier this year for an air show. There's a Lockheed plant there in Meridian, Mississippi that builds a piece of this airplane. So if we quit building pieces of this airplane, obviously those people potentially, possibly, are out of work. And we don't want to do that. For, and it, even aside from that whole process, and we talked earlier about this airplane being a deterrent, because everyone in the world, you can go out on the internet and Google F-22 Raptor and learn more than I could even imagine to know myself. Because it's out there at our fingertips. That's, the, that's just the nature of our technology. If we can do it, everybody in this world can do it. And they know the capabilities of this airplane. And like I said, it's a deterrent. It keeps that future threat at bay. That's what it does. I always get asked, well, when are we going to take it over to the desert? When are we going to do that? This airplane flies coastal missions weekly, protecting the borders of this country right here every day. That isn't told all the time. You don't see that. So is this jet employed in the global war on terror and fighting terrorism? Yes, it is every day.